Hello everyone! Today we'll be covering one of the most important parts of cosplay, wigs. And I've got a lot to talk about, so we're just gonna jump right into it. First off, a lot of people don't know why wearing wigs is so important for cosplay. A lot of beginners like to just use their real hair, and they don't understand why it doesn't look good. The issue is that real hair can be pretty thin, um, it doesn't always photograph well, and furthermore, it can be really difficult to style perfectly like the characters, because Newsflash, most anime characters' hair does not work like real people's hair. I mean, granted, some days I, I wake up looking like I want Super Saiyan, but... So the benefits of wearing a wig are it looks so much better in photos, you don't have to deal with styling it every single time you put it on, and furthermore, you don't have to destroy your real hair trying to achieve an anime character's hairstyle. Because believe it or not, this color isn't natural, and sometimes doing that to your real hair can be pretty damaging. Granted, there will always be exceptions. For a character like Yuffie from Final Fantasy VII, you really don't have to use a wig if your real hair looks like that. But I was someone who used my real hair for Yuffie once upon a time, um, and it was really, really frustrating because every time I wanted to wear that costume, I had to go to the salon and get it cut and get it reshaped and everything. Then there were days where my hair just wouldn't cooperate, like the bangs wouldn't lay right, and it was just really frustrating because I had to deal with that every time I wanted to wear one of my favorite costumes. So, since then I've bought a wig. Bottom line, wigs will 99% of the time look better than your real hair. Get a wig. Just do it. But Cyrene! Where do I buy wigs? Well, you can buy wigs lots of different places. A lot of the time local beauty stores will carry wigs, and usually they don't have anime hair colors, but if you're going for a natural hairstyle for, say, Rue from Princess Tutu, you can generally find what you're looking for. Keep in mind though, a lot of beauty stores will only carry human hair wigs. There are two different types of wigs you can get. One is human hair and the other is synthetic. And synthetic will be stuff like this, where it's generally in that $30 to $80 price range. But human hair wigs, because it's human hair, they can get really, really expensive really quickly. They can be like upwards of $100, so usually for a cosplayer's budget, they don't work too well. And that's why I always buy synthetic wigs, it's just, it makes more sense. Please, for the love of God, guys, do not buy like Party City or Halloween USA wigs and expect them to look good. They won't. The fibers are really low quality plastic, they'll be super shiny, and they'll tangle up the wazoo, so... Just don't waste your money on those. Online there are hundreds of wig stores. One of the most popular places to buy wigs is in fact eBay. A lot of those wigs come from China so they can be a lot lower quality but if you need just a quick simple wig for a really simple costume that you don't really care how it looks then eBay is a good place to go. And there are a couple of really good quality wig stores on eBay such as Fantasy Sheep or Cosplay Wig. The links for those are down there. But the most important thing to do when buying from eBay is check the customer feedback for that seller. The same goes for a site like Taobao. If you're not familiar with this, this is kind of the Chinese version of eBay, if you will. You can get wigs really cheaply on there. Like, insanely cheaply. The issue here is that they don't sell to US customers, so you have to go through a middleman service, such as Taobao Spree or Obook, in order to purchase from them. But if you don't feel like ordering from a site like eBay or Taobao, there are several wig dedicated sites. One of them is Amphigori, and this was a lot more popular a couple years ago. Um, they, they do have decent quality wigs, but you run into a lot of issues with their service and their shipping schedules and whether they have items in stock and then they won't tell you if they're in stock. I've had a lot of Amphigori nightmares lately, and so has Courtney, so we just don't really buy from there anymore. Same goes for Cosworks, and that is the cosplay.com shopping site. Again, a few years ago they were a lot better, but now the quality has kind of gone down. Shipping and customer service is a nightmare, so again, I just don't bother with them anymore. When I buy my wigs online, I either buy them from two places. The first one is Epic Cosplay, and they have a lot more, like, base-type wigs. You won't get a huge variety of special styles or anything like that, but if you need just, like, a generic long wig or something, they're good to go to. My medley wig that I wore recently is actually from Epic Cosplay, but even then, Epic Cosplay is a wig site that I only use if Arda Wigs doesn't have what I'm looking for. I'm not gonna lie, Arda Wigs is the best thing to happen to cosplay in a long, long time. It is a wig company run by cosplayers, so they know exactly what your needs are, because they've been there. Their wigs aren't super expensive, which is really, really nice, and the best part is that they're insanely high quality. Because typically when it comes to wigs, you get what you pay for. So if you're paying for a $17 wig on Taobao, it's gonna be a $17 wig from Taobao. Whereas if you spend a little bit more and get a $35 wig from Arta Wigs, you are paying for the quality and the customer service and 
These wigs are just such a pleasure to work with. They're really thick, they're super comfortable, and usually when my friends and I don't buy Arda wigs, we always find ourselves saying, man, we really should have bought Arda. So again, those are just a few places to buy wigs online. The most important thing when buying a wig, though, is to match it to your character's hairstyle. Not all characters have hairstyles that you can just go out and purchase, like Sora, or Cloud, or Ty Lee, or Krahe, or Korra. Usually those are wigs that you'll have to style yourself from scratch, but a character like Zuko has very normal, basic hair, so you can just go out and buy that. For a beginner, I would recommend choosing a character who has a very simple hairstyle that won't require a ton of difficult styling processes. For example, I would look for a character that you'll only have to trim the wig a little bit or maybe style the bangs, and that's it. Speaking of wig styling, wig styling products. The first thing you gotta know is that you can't use, like, real hair products on your wigs because most regular hair products are made to react with the proteins in your hair and wig fibers don't have that because they're plastic. When it comes to wig styling products, most cosplayers swear by the got to be line. These styling products are really, really intense. They're the ones you see where there's like the crazy spiked hair and punky stuff going on on the labels. For spiking, you want to get the spiking glue, obviously. And you'll also want to buy got to be freeze spray. I actually don't have any on hand right now, so I can't show you what it looks like, but it's just a this size bottle and then there's like a little funnel on the end. It's vital for styling bangs and spikes and generally any sort of gravity-defying hairstyle. If your wig has heat-resistant fibers, you can use things such as blow dryers and hair straighteners on them in order to style them. Normally, if your wig is not heat resistant, you can't use these tools because that'll cause the fibers to literally melt. But if it is a heat resistant wig, then it's safe to use these on it. Just be careful. And finally, other tools that you should invest in are a good pair of hair cutting scissors. You can get those at CVS for like five bucks. And you'll also want to get some of these alligator style clips. You'll also want to get a wide tooth comb. It's really not okay to use regular brushes on wigs because that can tend to pull out the fibers a lot. But Wide tooth combs will help separate the fibers without pulling them out of the wig cap. This is another tool that's very, very important to have, um, otherwise you'll run into a lot of trouble styling your wigs. And you can buy these wig heads at Sally's or online. So those are just the base tools you need to get started um, until you get into more advanced techniques. You don't really need more than those basic tools. So the most important thing to do when putting on your wig is you want to make sure to get your hair as flat as possible. Obviously if you have short hair, this isn't really an issue, but for those of you with longer hair like me, it can be pretty tricky. The biggest thing you don't want to do is just pull your hair back in a ponytail, because that'll create this giant bump on the back of your head and then that'll show on your wig and your head will look deformed and it's just a mess. When I'm putting on my wig, I do it one of three ways. First way is if I'm at a convention, I'll have one of my friends French braid my hair and that'll get my hair very, very flat really easy to manage. Or if I'm feeling like putting in a lot of effort to it, which is, I think I've done it once, um, is doing pin curls. I'm literally awful at this so I can't really show you, but basically you'll take the strand of hair and wrap it really tightly like that into a little curl. You'll take a bobby pin and just pin it in place. And then you do that around your entire head. It gets really flat, but it can be pretty time consuming. And a lot of the times during conventions I'm rushing to get ready because it takes me forever to get into costume. So when I'm running behind on time and I need to put my hair up in a wig cap really, really quickly, I just do braids. Usually this is easiest to do when it's still damp or even still soaking wet from a shower. Mine's still kind of damp um, from my shower this morning. When your hair is slightly wet, it's a lot easier to work with. So that's what I like to do for wigs. And then also the bonus is if your hair is wet when you braid it, and then after you take it out of your wig cap, it'll generally still look really nice. So I'm just doing really simple braided pigtail, take an elastic, done. So there's one side, there we go. From here, you'll just take these two braids and pin them up. You want to pin them like in this area of your head because that's usually where there's a lot of space in wig caps for the specific purpose of putting your hair there. <laughs> looks a little silly, but that's what wigs are for. For your bangs, just pin them up and out of your face. Generally, you'll want to use a skin-toned wig cap like I always do, but if you have a black wig or something, you can get away with the black. I'm just going to use my go-to skin-colored one. You just pull it on, um, try and pull it down your face like this a little bit, then inch it backwards. Then if you get hair sticking out, just kind of tuck it up in there, and check your back hairline to make sure all of your hair is tucked in there. Voila! That was the most difficult part, putting on your wig cap. 
So now that I am totally bald, I'm going to go find a wig to wear. Mm, not really feeling it today. So take it upside down. Make sure the bangs aren't in the wig cap. And then pull it on. I look like Cousin It right now. Adjust it. You'll want the two little sideburn pieces right where yours would be. And then where your wig cap is and your hairline, that's where you want the top of the wig to hit. And usually for a wig that is such a drastically different hair color than your own, I'd suggest changing your eyebrow color, but that's an entirely different video and I don't feel like doing that today. But that is how you put on a wig. When it comes to cutting wigs, there's a lot of different techniques you can use, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you how to cut in straight across bangs, because that's something that was really requested on my Facebook page. This is a prototype wig from Arda. Um, you can't actually purchase this, but I really don't have a character that I can use it for, so I'm just going to use it for this tutorial. For bangs, one of the things that most beginners do is they cut them way too short. So what you want to do is take your fingers and from your hairline, where your hair hits, where your wig cap will hit measure down to where you want your bangs to hit, and I want these to kind of come a little bit below my eyebrows, so I want them about that length. And then from where the wig starts, measure down with that length, kind of punch into the wig head a little bit. That is where I want to cut the bangs to. This wig kind of has a David Bowie cloud feel to it, I don't know, it's weird. Pull the fibers down to where you want them to be, and then with your scissors, cut upwards into the hair. You never, never, never want to just take a chunk of hair and cut straight across because that'll look very, very choppy and like you're a two-year-old trying to cut your own hair. It's still a little chunky at the bottom, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut upwards into the wig like that, just cutting straight up, and this will help thin them out a lot. But there you go, nice simple straight across bangs. Um, and to get a more choppy, fringy look like I did for Yuki because she doesn't have straight across bangs, I was a lot more haphazard when I was cutting, um, didn't really care about hitting the same level, but I used the same exact technique of just cutting upwards into the wig. Now a lot of anime characters have spikes in their hair, um, and this can be pretty challenging for beginners to do. In the description I've included a link to Melinda Chan's tutorial on how to do spikes and her wigs are amazing and just phenomenal, so definitely go check out her work. But I'm going to do my best to show you guys generally how to spike wigs. If you're working with a wig that already has a ton of layers in it, you don't really need to cut it. But if you are cutting spikes into a wig that isn't already layered, you'll want to make sure that it has a very triangular shape. And what that means is you want the fibers thicker here, and then you want it to thin out as it gets toward the end so that it tapers off into a nice point. And the way you can do that is, again, just cutting upwards into the strand, and that'll help thin it out. Once you have all the cutting done, take your got to be glued and just kind of apply that to the tips of your fingers. And then take the wig, just drag your fingers along that chunk. And then at the very end, I like to do a little twist. That helps it be very pointed. There you go, there's some nice, decent spikes. Yeah, it does kind of feel like a cloud wig, doesn't it? And if you don't want the sharp, sharp point like that and you want a more natural look, you don't really have to use as much product. Just kind of take a chunk and take a little bit of the got to be glued on your fingers and just kind of pull it lightly. If you do like the look of very natural spikes, don't even bother dragging your fingers along the whole strand. Just kind of take a little bit on your fingers and pinch the ends. And that'll just help define them. Basic spiking. Oh, my hands are all sticky. Curling a wig can be a lot more difficult of a process than spiking or just simply cutting it. If you have a heat resistant wig, you can usually use a curling iron to do so, and that's pretty much the easiest way to go about it. But there are several other methods that you can use in order to curl a wig. One would be the hot water method, and as you can probably guess, it involves hot water. And to do that, you'll want to boil water and then curl the wig over something, usually um, a wooden dowel rod or plastic curlers. Pour the water over it, let the heat help the curls set, and then take it out. The method that I use for curling actually uses plastic curlers. You'll wrap the hair around this, sort of like you would your own, and then pin it in place. And then when it's like this, um, I hit it with some hairspray, usually the freeze spray, and let that sit a little bit, and then I'll take a blow dryer and hit it with heat for about one to two minutes 
um, on and off, making sure that the fibers aren't frizzing or crinkling when they get too hot. Let it sit overnight for about 24 hours, um, and then I'll come back the next day, take it out, and well, it's obviously not cold now. Again, check out the description for an actual tutorial on how to do that. Um, I really don't feel like curling this, so I'm not going to. <laughs> A lot of the times you'll have characters whose hair colors aren't available just because they're so weird. Um, and in that case, you'll have to dye a wig. There are, again, dozens of different ways you can go about doing this. There are three main methods that are the most popular, and that is using Sharpies, using Copic markers, or using FW ink. All of those three methods involve mixing ink with rubbing alcohol and then spraying it onto your wig, letting it sit, and then washing out the alcohol. Basically what this does is the alcohol evaporates and leaves the ink on the wig. I personally like using the FW ink method because I've just had better results with it and you can more easily control the color. So what you'd be doing in that case is mixing isopropyl rubbing alcohol, usually the 70% works best, with FW ink. And you can buy this at Blix Art Supplies. There's a little dropper in it and that's how you mix it with the alcohol. And then you mix it all together in a spray bottle and just spray it on the wig. There's apparently still some left in here. Whoops. Again, there are links in the description on all three of those methods, so be sure to check them out. Finally, caring for long wigs. Wigs like to tangle very, very badly because, again, it's plastic. One of the best methods for dealing with a long wig is to treat it with Motions Oil Sheen Spray. You can get it at Sally's. I've also seen it at CVS. It smells like strawberry Pez. Basically, spray it on the wig, let it sit, for 48 hours and then go back and brush it out and your wig will generally remain untangled even when you're wearing it at the convention. Naturally it will get a little bit frizzy just from friction and rubbing against your back as you walk but in that case it's always good to have your wide tooth comb with you at the convention and to just brush it out periodically. This is actually what I had to do for my stocking wig. I had to carry my brush around all day and have my friends just brush out my hair like every 20 minutes or so. When you're storing your long wig, you'll want to braid it and then fold it up so that it doesn't get tangled while it's in storage. How you store a wig will generally depend on how styled it is. For example, for a wig like this that really doesn't require any styling, I just take it off, put it in a plastic bag, and put it in my storage bin, which I will show you guys now. I'll get out of there. This is what I have. It's just a plastic bin where I keep all my wigs, and some of them are in bags, some of them aren't. And they're just all stacked up very neatly. But for a style like vinyl, where I don't want to just crumple it up and throw it in a bin, I will set it on my work table. I'll take a plastic bag and just cover it. That way it stops it from getting dusty and it'll also keep the style protected when it's in storage. But that is a basic guide to wigs. Um, I tried to cover as much as I could in as short amount of time as possible. Um, so if there's anything I didn't talk about that you're still curious about, feel free to ask me questions or contact me on Facebook or send me a message. If you have any other questions regarding cosplay or any topics you want me to cover, feel free to leave me a comment. Anyway, I hope that helped, and as always, happy cosplaying!